How's it going everyone? It's been a while since I've done a video on this channel, but I figured I would share a pickup I recently got out of the e-waste, and it's a old Commodore 1084S D2 monitor. It's uh, 13 inches, this one was made in 92 I believe, and it came out of an e-waste bin so unfortunately it's missing the front cover. And as you can clearly see, it is extremely dirty. So after testing it, it powers on as you can see, but I'm standing beside this monitor and I'm holding the power button down, which is um, a pretty common problem I've realized now that I've researched this a little bit. So in a future video I will be taking this apart, cleaning it all up and replacing the power cord. I'm using a Super Nintendo to test it with the Aladdin game and I have the Super Nintendo actually hooked up with a uh, S-Video. This monitor doesn't have S-Video, it has uh, Luma Chroma, which is just a kind of dated version of S-Video. You can make a quarter, you can buy them on eBay for pretty cheap. It just converts the S-Video into the uh, Luma Chroma signal and it goes in the back and it looks incredibly good. I mean, it's hard to give a CRT any justice when you're filming it. It usually tends to come out just not right. The colors either look washed or it's a little blurry, but in person it looks excellent. This monitor does have RGB capabilities, so I'm pretty pumped to start dabbling into RGB. Uh, the only monitor I had before this one that I was using for retro consoles was a Commodore 1 2, but it was an old 1702 model. I found out there's a bunch of different 1084 models. There's the original 1084, which has different inputs on the back than this one. Uh, it's closer to some of the old Philips monitors at the same time, I guess Philips. Uh, Daewoo and one other that I cannot remember made bulbs for this. Um, there's also a 1084S, which is this one, which just means stereo sound, it has two speakers. And then there's a D1, a D2, and a P1, which is after the S. I'm not sure the revisions on those. I know the very first 1084 only had digital RGB, and it's analog RGB you want if you want to go skirt to RGB. Um, I know in the U or in Europe it's a lot easier with all your SCART enabled monitors and TVs, but if you're in North America here, SCART is a hard thing to do and it becomes pricey. I will probably slowly start converting some of my consoles to SCART, mainly with the Genesis first because I've heard that's the biggest improvement going from composite to SCART and the Genesis has no S video. Where S video on this Super Nintendo going to that Chroma Luma looks great and from what I've read there's not that big of a jump from RGB so that might be one of the last ones I do and it's nice having not everything RGB because then I can still stream or I can put it onto a flat screen. I know it doesn't look good on a modern flat screen monitor and no I don't have any frame meisters to upscale. Maybe if I get a frame meister I'll start converting everything to RGB but for now this will probably become the main gaming monitor. Anyways, let me get this thing unplugged, I'll get it turned around and you guys can see how dirty it is and what kind of inputs are on the back. As you can see the sides, like it's just covered in, I don't know what, tar and dust and dirt. Wherever it was, it sat for a long time getting dirty. It didn't turn on at first too, like I had to hold the power button in, I got no picture on the screen. I gave it a little fawns, gave it a smack on the side and it came to life. Hopefully that's the only issue. Uh, there, oh, another cool thing about this on the side, I don't know if you saw it there, there's a little headphone jack, which is neat. But here's a closer look at the volume, the hue, color, contrast, brightness, and uh, H phase, which just, again, rotates the screen. And look at the color difference on there, eh? That's disgusting. It should clean up really nice, though. There's no cracks or chip broken pieces of plastic. It's a dirty screen, too, not giving the monitor any justice for how good it looks. And here's the backside. As you can see, it just more dirt, tons of dirt. There's the model number, 1084S D2. It gives you some x-ray emissions warnings, so apparently you should wear lead around these, I guess. Is that what it is? It protects you from x-rays. Um, manufactured 1992, so this is a fairly newer one. I don't know if the D2 is one of the final revisions of this, but from what I've seen, most of these were dated 88, 89. Uh, you have your composite and then your top one, which is part of your Luma Chroma, so you would think there would be no Luma Chroma, but it uses the composite and the Luma. There's your analog RGB, and here's your horizontal size, vertical size, and vertical shift. Um, these buttons down and up, I haven't quite figured out. Uh, one down and one of them up was composite, and then both down did the Luma Chroma, and then I think a different one down and another one up does RGB. 
there's a manual that shows you how to do it. Hopefully the RGB works on this. I don't have a way to test that yet. I'll show you what the cord looks like so that you can uh, use your Lumachroma. There's basically two splits. They're just RCA jacks. They're nothing fancy. I use nice shielded ones and there's the S-Video end and it just splits the Luma and the Chroma from the S-Video into two separate sources and that goes into the monitor. Easy peasy. The RGB looks a little different. I gotta get this weird like I think it was seven pinned in to uh, PNC and then I can go from SCART to PNC so I can get SCART from the consoles. There's the power button that just it clicks but it won't stay on so you have to hold it so that's what's getting replaced. And other than that, it's just disgusting. I mean, look at it. It's just gross. Hopefully it cleans up really nice. I think it should. This this will make a good cleanup video. I'll show you guys the screen a little better here too. It's, again, like I said, really hard to give this monitor any justice when you're filming it through a CRT. It's just, it's hard. But the scan lines look awesome in it. The color's correct. Uh, I don't see any geometry issues or warping. It just all in all looks really good which is amazing when you consider how disgustingly dirty it is I was surprised that it even turned on so a power switch replacement a good cleanup a polish of that dirty glass and I will have myself a nice little CRT gaming monitor I will uh, definitely make a video showing you guys how I'm gonna clean this all up and restore it and get it as new as possible it's gonna be a lot of scrubbing some retro bright some soldering you can't just replace the switch it's actually soldered to a PCB so that's gonna be fun and I'm not amazing at soldering so hopefully this goes good it looks like a pretty easy one to solder because they're pretty big points on that switch anyways guys that does it for this video I know it's been a while and this was just a little short video of a cool monitor I picked up for free but I'll definitely be putting out more content soon I got a big electronics haul I just picked up so I'll share that with you guys most of it will probably get sold though but that's alright, it just goes to funding the hobby. Anyways, until the next video, bye for now.